Meanwhile, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights has warned that Sri Lanka could descend back into violence and human rights abuses. Many countries have in fact addressed the United Nations' concerns about this. India, while putting out its very measured stand, has said that it supports Sri Lanka's unity and territorial integrity and is also committed to the issue of the Tamil equality and peace in the island nation. Remember, earlier Sri Lanka had officially sought India's support ahead of this session. We advocate that delivering on the legitimate aspirations of the Tamil community is in the best interest of Sri Lanka. We call upon Sri Lanka to take necessary steps for addressing such aspirations, including through the process of reconciliation and full implementation of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution of Sri Lanka. The assessment of the High Commissioner raises important concerns. The Sri Lankan government has articulated its position on these issues as well. Now, Pakistan took a pretty clear stand and called for dialogue with the Sri Lankan government to advance the goals of reconciliation. The representative to the United Nations also said that Sri Lanka has been a victim of terrorism and hence its sacrifices should be appreciated. Accordingly, we call for continuation of consultations with the democratically elected Sri Lankan government on how best to advance the goals of accountability and reconciliation. For far too long, Sri Lanka has been a victim of terrorism, aided, abetted and financed from abroad, including from its neighborhood. We commend Sri Lanka's strong democratic history and its impressive socio-economic achievements. Multi-ethnic composition of the parliament and the cabinet is also encouraging. The High Commissioner's report and this council's deliberation should acknowledge these positive attributes. The China has called itself a friend and a neighbor of Sri Lanka and has also hailed the country for maintaining political stability and ethnic solidarity. It has further recommended the efforts to protect human rights and China has turned and condemned the United Nations body for interfering in Sri Lanka's personal affairs. Friend and neighbor of Sri Lanka, China sincerely hopes that Sri Lanka maintains political stability, ethnic solidarity and national unity and which is Sri Lanka greater achievements in its national development. We are concerned about the prominent lack of impartiality shown in the OHCR's report on Sri Lanka and express our regret over the failure of OHCR HCR to take on board the authoritative information provided by Sri Lankan government, the so-called preventive intervention and the proposed targeted sanctions contained in the report are clear interference in the internal affairs of Sri Lanka and oversteps the mandate of OHCHR. Now, the United States has shown concern over the increasing marginalization of the minority community in Sri Lanka. The United States has also called on other countries to raise concerns over the human rights violations unfolding in the country. We are concerned by accounts of increasing marginalization of minority communities and shrinking space for civil society including independent media. We remain concerned about the lack of accountability, including high-level appointments of military officials credibly accused of conflict-era abuses. The Sri Lankan government's efforts to address, to address concerns raised in OHCHR's report via a domestic process need to be meaningful and credible. Now, this comes after the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, had called for an international criminal court investigation into Sri Lanka's Tamil separatist conflict. Now, Bachelet had also called for sanctions against top generals and others accused of war crimes. The report released by her said that Sri Lanka's current trajectory sets the scene for the recurrence of the policies and practices that gave rise to some pretty grave human rights violations. The United Nations and other aid agencies estimate that more than 40,000 people were killed in the final stages of Sri Lanka's war against the Tamil Tiger rebels in 2009, including many civilians. Now, the U.S. Human Rights Office has accused both sides of atrocities and has sought accountability for what happened in the war. Now, Sri Lanka, for its part, is denying the accusation in, accusations in Bakalit's reports. Sri Lanka's foreign minister has slammed the findings and has said that the entire report is based on groundless data. This is the best defense that Sri Lankans are putting forth. At one point, he also said that the agenda behind the report is propaganda and is actually politically motivated. He reiterated Sri Lanka's stance that the issues that were raised after were essentially Sri Lanka's internal matters is how Sri Lanka is describing 
what earlier by many commentators has been described as a genocide of the Tamils in the civil war that ended in 2009. Sri Lanka rejects High Commissioner's report, which is unjustifiably broadened its scope and mandate further. We regret the disproportionate attention drawn to Sri Lanka by this council, driven by political motivation. Sri Lanka calls upon the members of this council that any resolution which is based on this report be rejected by the council and be brought to a closure. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.